So wait, you had benzos? I never had benzos. No. I, I okay, no, no. Benzos. I, I, I'm real Jordan Peterson okay, okay. hours. I'm not. I, <laughs> I don't take benzos. That's not the thing. I just said that I have tried benzos before, and boys do not try benzos because the <laughs> shit slaps. <laughs> <All right? laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I don't want to like give negative advertisement for this sort of shit. Don't do it. Do not do it. Okay, do not come. <laughs> do not come. But. <laughs> If you were to take a benzo, you were going to cruise to the rest of the fucking oh, day. Man. It is a vibe. The way uh, I'm imagining this is you opening the, like the medicine cupboard mm-hmm. of, of your hospital, exactly. like <laughs> just doing samples of each of them. Like, mm, what's this one? <laughs> Actually, no. You know, I'll tell you something, but JT, bleep it. Yep. <laughs> But now my, my uh, what's it called? My relaxation, my go-to relaxation is green tea, which is what I'm enjoying right now. Nice. Mm. Oh, fuck, it's so good. You need to watch the fucking show, Dope Sick. I have been spamming these two motherfuckers for like a <laughs> week now. Yes, you have. I am obsessed. Sorry, but this show is turning me into the greatest conspiracy theorist on planet <laughs> Earth. I can't believe, like, yes, shout out to, I guess, um, okay, we're not going to shout it out. On, a, on a, one certain other podcast, I listened to a personal experience with, with Oxycontin and then afterwards mm. moving into heroin because it was removed from the market and how it was an incredibly addictive opiate, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But being able to watch a very, very uh, well-narrated story based on real characters and real events that right in front of your eyes shows you how like you can 100% believe something is incredibly like okay for you you can Mm. read a hundred sources and they will all agree that it's okay (laughs) for you you can Mm -hmm. your doctor can prescribe it to you with a smile on his face because he also doesn't know what the fuck is going on and you're basically taking heroin pills (laughs) I, I know this is you know not the intention of the show makers or anybody criticizing this horrible event which is the opiate crisis in the United States. But, like, how do I trust anyone after yeah. this? Like, they no, got you, millions hooked on H in pills. And sacklers get the wall. All sacklers okay. get the so, wall. Yeah. So, yeah, so, pretty exactly. much. I was so how say, do I trust anybody? How do, how do I trust no, anything you need, given you, to you me? Need to remember, you need to remember that the U.S. has a heavy, heavy problem with um, overprescription yes. of this. Not only this, but also... Um, I don't want to go this far in because, you know, some people are going to be like, eh, actually. But the the fucking, the entire uh, system for verifying drugs, bringing them to market, uh, and then afterwards the ability of, you know, um, pharmaceutical companies to lobby individual doctors and individual clinics, how vast majority of healthcare is private, etc., etc. The entire system from top to bottom is heavily corrupt in the U.S. Yeah. Um, so it's completely unsurprising that a profit motive would overtake to such an extent and capitalism would show its ugly face so blatantly that yeah. it would result in you know millions addicted and hundreds of thousands of deaths, literally a quiet holocaust that's going on. Yeah. And don't take it from a bunch of commies. Take it from uh, my daddy who works in the <laughs> pharmaceutical industry. He worked for Pfizer for like 20 years um, and he would confirm all of this. Like he's a big, you know, bootstraps mentality kind of guy. Um, mm. But he would agree that, yeah, the, the whole thing's a racket and he's doing his own. He, he quit Pfizer because it's so corrupt and is doing like actual good cancer research and stuff now. But yeah, it's whack. Absolute Chad. I was going to say, you know that... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know, fuck, actually, my, uh, this won't dox me. Um, uh, they, they, we, we, they lobby us as even even as far away as, as in my little surprised. my little fucking corner of the of the world. They lobby us. They they you know I get mail sometimes, uh, and it's like all it's very you know rosy rosy yeah, letters, yeah. right? They they you know they write my name and then they write a big big fat doctor right behind it, uh, and it's like oh esteemed gentleman, like it's very very nice, you know. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm, I'm invited to some stupid fucking thing, and it's a very nice dinner, and they have, like, activities and, and all that kind like of stuff. send you, like, a box uh, of 30 Viagra pens just so you, you have it in mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. And then afterwards, it's like, look, look, it's like you go there, uh, it's a bunch of lectures about something unrelated, it's a really nice lunch, there's, you know, networking, all that kind of stuff. And then in the middle, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, our drug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Could you be prescribing this more, please? Yeah. It's a very cool drug. It's a very nice drug. <laughs> they're like ooh, <"Oop." laughs> like you know that stupid emoji with yeah. the uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, um, we just updated the patent. Uh, we didn't make it any better, but here you go. It's new and improved. TM. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck me. But yeah, um, the vast majority of the world is a bit better with this sort of stuff. 
the EU sucks overall for a lot of other stuff, but I, one thing I will give the EU uh, is their um, dr drug verification system and their limitations on prescription. Like they have a system of controlled uh, yeah. medications, and there's it's very watertight. Uh, for even the, most the show, part, for the, the, most the main yeah. bad guy, let's call him that, he doesn't even deserve his name being mentioned, kind of loses his shit because Germany doesn't want to allow his drug into the country. Yeah. But they do a little American like co side comment there where they're like, um, uh, it's not only their regulation, but uh, Europeans have a different philosophy towards uh, pain. You know, it, mm. pain is actually caused oh, by yeah, something. Yeah. So maybe we should cure what is causing the pain and not, you know, treat oh, pain wow. as a you disease. Mean, you, you, you mean preventative medicine, Ooh. which is the only thing that's been re <laughs> <laughs> clinically and proven in research to actually Terrifying. improve healthcare outcomes? My God, the U.S. is such a shithole. I'm sorry, JT. Uh -huh. It genuinely is such a Oh, I'm aware of it. Hole. You don't think I'm aware of this? You don't, you don't think I see my bills? <laughs> Oh yeah, too. Jesus Christ! Yeah, you're fucking you're, you're, you're limping from the fucking kidney they took. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so sorry. Hey, yeah, the, the the baby is worth it. Yeah, she's right. Solo. You know, following and all the characters are trying to heal it by, I don't know, praying away the gay in, in church because literally one girl starts thinking that she got addicted to this because she's gay so everything's like wrong with her or whatever. <laughs> or, or like going to the wrong type of like uh, detoxification meetings because mm -hmm. they didn't have any back then. Okay, I can't really blame that on them. So, you know, AA, which are really cool dudes, uh, try to help like opiate addicts, but you know, you need a different approach because that shit's far more addictive etc mm. etc like all even all the solutions to to this massive problem that's that's growing around them were absolutely hilarious and the only people that were actually suing them actively and that kind of found this whole thing out is a random dea lady that like one day just saw hundred people waiting outside of a fucking hospital uh -huh. that's literally prescribing it for 500 bucks each. You don't even have to see the doctor. And like two hick uh, lawyers that uh, happened to have stumbled upon it as well. And God bless all three of those people because they did a great job and they managed to stop something from spreading even further. But I'm I'm trying to say is like it it, it the, the reason it was ever even uncovered to an extent is pure coincidence, pure absolute luck because with enough capital you can you can keep anything under wraps almost under, right. yeah that's what i was gonna say it's like there are many large well-connected wealthy circles that knew full well what was what yeah. the fuck's going on but yeah the general public yeah they the, the fuck <laughs> get fucked you don't you don't get to know anything <laughs> take the bill and shut take the bill and shut up oh. everybody that america, everybody america number one woo. <laughs> Every higher, high, like every single person that would bring this up, they would just buy out. They will hire. Dude, like half dude, of the lawyers the, that, that sue them ended up being their high paid lawyers. Like yeah. it's absolutely incredible. Have you, Gary, don't you remember Gary Webb? Yeah. Who's, he's the guy who, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's the one who figured out the connection between the CIA and the drug trafficking yeah. to inner cities and whatnot. Got bonked. And then he was found with two bullets, yeah, bonked with two bullet <laughs> holes in the back of his head. Oh, suicide. So he yes, killed himself. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> he was Epic tied up and shot twice them. in the back of the head. Yeah, yeah, do you know, I love that. This is like, you know. Well, the audacity of the Russian state and its assassinations, but Americans, so it becomes, you know, yeah. fuck. <laughs> what was I going to say? Speaking of drugs, the, today, I, right now, I was having my green tea. This was my last green tea bag for today. If you remember, I think it was like four episodes ago that I told you about I, was, I ran out of green tea and I had to get more oh, yeah. green tea. Uh -huh. uh, I get I get like 100, 100 packs of green tea. I fucking, <laughs> I fucking plow through this shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know why I don't just buy in bulk at this fucking point. You should, but honestly, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I'm 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 gonna be uh what do you say uh, J T I'm gonna be not itching from itching Jones from my head. Tweaking Jones and yeah I'm gonna <laughs> be Jones and Jones and <laughs> <Tweaking. from my laughs> <head. laughs> and it's called green as well so there yeah. you go yeah, exactly right but you said you're also addicted to Semichki apparently because I have a Semichki story but start with yours you you've regained that addiction or an addiction towards right. green tea is that what you meant in the notes no no I I have an addiction to green tea currently but um my a long time ago. I used to be super into just nut mixes. I I still am. I love I love fucking I love mixes of yeah. nuts. <laughs> Me and JT know that very well. <laughs> exactly I love right. mixing that, that, them right up. Mm, exactly right. Yeah, JT, um, but can you like from... shave next time, man? Because like I like to shave, and you always yeah. don't. So we either both not shave or or or, you uh, get or both shave. This is revisionism. <laughs> I am smooth as a seal. <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways, Femi not Nazi speaking about my... <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not Real speaking about my patience. Um, but uh, no, no. I, specifically, I like sunflower seeds and. Uh, I thought you were gonna say them? specifically like shaved nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that too. Yes, JT shaved like a mm. like a, a smooth like. like hey, why are you betraying me like this? You know, like, like a boiled hairy. egg. I like both. Anyways, uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I like what the, what the fuck? Pumpkin seeds? Are they called pumpkin seeds? Uh, you can uh, have pump. yeah. Yeah. So, the pumpkin. Flat ones, yeah, pumpkin and sunflower. Yeah, yeah, pumpkin. And Those are my, my the favorite. Aryan but ones, the, the is, white ones are pumpkin. <laughs> the the uh, green with dashed the, gray. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the New Jerusalem black ones are sunflower seeds. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> but I, I was like, you know what? Like, uh, the, like too much fucking salt, and uh, I just sit there, you know, munching away. So I was like, you know what? I need to keep this under control. Until my parents, for some reason, just showed up the other day. Uh, and they had like a, a massive bag of this shit, and they just left it at my oh, place. Nice. They didn't eat any; they just brought it and left <laughs> it. <laughs> so I was like, "Hey, you know, I don't mind if I do." And now I'm I'm back to my old ways. So yeah, it but, is uh, an I mean, absolutely uh, worthy addiction. It is. I I do not care how much salt it has or how much it's hurting my body. I am built like a fucking truck, and I will eat those <laughs> until the moment I die. When I don't have teeth, I will have will pay people to chew them for me and spit them in my fucking mouth but it doesn't but you don't get the full experience unless you chew it uh, yourself mm. Semichki are a god blessed motherfucking thing and even though yeah, i'm flexing i actually had a scare last week for three days in a row i think i had like five packs i don't know what the fuck was going on no. and okay. uh, and at coming. one moment my uh, what do you call that appendicitis appendicitis your whatever appendix thing? the actual appendix, appendix. Yeah, appendix. Yeah, i was wondering appendix. what you were trying to spell in the document yeah. A pentisid <laughs> <Okay>. hurt. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, it actually started flaring up and shit and my girlfriend was super scared uh, and now she's feeding me insanely like healthy shit for a week now I just ate uh, Brussels sprouts and broccoli and white rice Oof. save me from this hell <laughs> please no, hey. no it's good it's good uh, but uh, b- b- when I started recording the podcast I ha- ate like half a pack of chocolate so ha 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 screw you bitch <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my lord! You have a you have a you have a godsend of a woman in your home, and you're this fucking yeah. you're this fucking rowdy. I can't <laughs> believe. <laughs> oh man! It, it takes Heavy one to okay. no one, you know. It takes. Uh, yeah, there you go. Exactly opposites right. attract, wanted or not. <laughs> no, no, don't worry about it. It, it can kind of like irritate. It won't cause. It, it's not really related. Um, I mean, it may be possibly, but I wouldn't really. Uh, I wouldn't consider that to be called. Nonetheless, though, you should be careful with it because at the end of the day, you could still get um, um, constipated because of them. Especially if you mix lots of other nuts. Mm. So do be careful. I, I, all my life, I shit three times a day, sometimes four. Okay. Uh, so if it comes down to two, <laughs> I will be very happy for it. Fair enough. Um, fair enough. If, if anybody else had the, the lifestyle that I had up until like four or five years ago with any different immune system, literally grave, just grave, grave. <laughs> so, uh, right. yeah, yeah. But do, do, do send me your, your blood results the next time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> just so I can confirm or yeah, deny. It's all green. It's all green. I only had yeah. like okay. hemoglobin in blue. Yeah. Cause, uh, okay, yeah. uh, give me values, my guy. I don't do it on the podcast, but then do send me eventually. <laughs> I actually course, do care about your guys' health, oh. <laughs> so oh, okay. you you do have the Hakeem the, the, the Hakeem healthcare plan. He needs to maintain his investment. <laughs> yeah, exactly right, that too. You know how difficult it will be oh. to find new hosts and restart a different podcast. We have all the passwords. <laughs> Die and lock him out oh, at the end right. of the program because, <laughs> yeah. because he didn't have a password. But like on my deathbed, my last wish is fuck the other two guys. <laughs> Deactivate the Patreon account. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Patreon, uh, if you would like to support this show continuing and our ever accruing <laughs> medical be- bills uh, being actually solved, uh, consider the link down in the description. 
So, hello everyone and welcome back to the fourth, I think, or fifth, or seventh, actually <laughs> it is the fourth installment of mm-hmm. arguably the most original online politics show out there. Send nudes, I mean send news, where we do just that. <laughs> Go over news. Same intro Mind every time. Blowing. I know. And I, I love it. Just like in every news show. <laughs> Motherfuckers, they don't let me do my thing. Every news show has a relatively similar, uh, similar introduction, so I'm trying to keep this fucking thing professional, but no, they want to talk about yeah. sandwich key and shaved balls. Balls. Oh, wait, it was me who brought up those topics. Okay. <laughs> Story of my life. I just keep talking to myself. Is this podcast just me talking to like three versions of myself? Oh, no, the other. It's JT talking to two versions of himself. Comrade, uh, the, JT the, making the three voices. The, the solitary <laughs> confinement in the basement is getting to you. I can hear you starting to, <laughs> to, to slip. <laughs> He's breaking. Yeah. Um, the, the lore, the lore uh, is changing because the main characters are glitching out. <laughs> So, in relatively positive news, President Jair Bolsonaro, I will forever, until I die, mispronounce that motherfucker's (laughs) name, will not be publicly addressing his defeat after Brazil's presidential elections. He said he will not be talking to anybody up until Tuesday, and the day of the recording of this show is Wednesday. In a silent and yet unintentionally pussy-ass way, he accepted the results of said uh, election, where, if you are not informed for some reason at this point, Mm -hmm. uh, Lula and uh, his party uh, ended up being victorious with a 1% margin. Uh, This comes after four years of heavy suppression of left-wing voices inside of the country, a mass pollution increase, uh, the destruction of the Amazon, and an almost complete destruction of all institutional protection of uh, the indigenous peoples uh, of Brazil. This victory has come as a massive surprise to the local right wing, which has already uh, started its mass protests all over the country. They have blocked over 150 different highway points uh, as a sign of rejection of the new uh, (laughs) new election results. There are some very funny videos coming out kind of inspiring the idea that uh, right-wingers all over the world are incredibly similar, some very QAnon-y type of behavior. Mm. My favorite was a guy that burned his car and then called the TV (laughs) and standing in front of his burned vehicle saying, who the fuck has the balls like me to burn his car uh, in order to prove that this country is corrupt? And I'm like, okay, I mean, Mm, you do you, bro. That, that, That sounds like it's going to accomplish a lot. But yes, uh, we have a social democratic party now in control of uh, Brazil. Uh, Lula, the leader of said party, had been president for two consecutive terms uh, in the past. Uh, Many analyze this return uh, of Lula as a more radical version of him. Uh, uh, Lula that has realized that... uh, his platform of uh, Lula. poverty. <laughs> huh? What? P- punish Lula. Punish Lula. <laughs> punish Lula returns in a different version after realizing that his <laughs> his <laughs> radical reformism waiting, huh? of uh, of the, his past two uh, terms uh, no longer he still works without. Yeah, yeah, but no longer works without the direct questioning of. Uh, of large capital, if not uh, the system. Uh, Lula's platform for a very long time, uh, including now to an extent, but relatively changed, uh, had concentrated not necessarily only on working class people, but also a massive chunk of the Brazilian electorate, which are people who are actually outside of work and cannot find work, and people who are in incredible poverty under, again, a a platform of poverty eradication not workers' rights, et cetera, et cetera, not, uh, uh, you know, the, the changing of the systemic structure, 
but a very, let's call it, modest, basic uh, proposition. Uh, after the second term, uh, after his second term, to quote one of his former press secretaries, uh, they, they had um, come to a conclusion that uh, the standardized approach uh, of uh, kind of uh, appeasing neoliberalism, neoliberalism because they do not want to scare off uh, the middle and upper middle classes of Brazil Investment. does not work because uh, they ended up being the ones who quite literally ousted them out of government in the coming elections. And therefore, there is great hope in uh, punished Lula uh, approaching this, his new government with uh, with relatively more uh, radical both policy and approach to dealing with not only the neoliberal problem in this country, but the fascist one. I was going to just say a point of analysis just to deepen the, the perspective. Yes, it's a social democratic victory, but we need to remember that concretely, the material conditions of social democracy within the imperial periphery are different from mm -hmm. within the imperial core. The social democracies of the imperial core rely on super exploitation of the third world, uh, unequal exchange and all this. this these things we've spoken about a million times. We even have made episodes on this um, in order to basically uh, support this and maintain this social democracy, maintain all the concessions that are given to the working class of the imperial core uh, social democracies. Usually, the, the imperial periphery social democracies don't have the privilege of super, exploit super exploiting or maybe even the political will to do it, which would be the, the, the good thing. But sometimes some of them want to but just can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, they uh, rely on uh, basically usually nationalizing the resources of the country or other such industries, fields, whatnot, and then moving more of the profit towards um, away from like, you know, private uh, investors or owners and whatnot, and more into the state coffers, which are then used to subsidize programs uh, for the working class or just the people in general. That's what Venezuela does, for example. So th keep that in mind. Even though this is still reformist, it's still technically a positive change for Brazil, especially uh, when compared to Bolsonaro, uh, or Balls Sonaro, sorry, I forgot to <laughs> mispronounce. One. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that being said, though, socialism and revolution is always better because it is a permanent solution, um, or at least a more permanent solution than social democracy. That's all I had to say. Yeah. Agreed. It's a it's a pragmatic approach. It lets them, you know, catch their breath after a, a period of uh, intensely increasing fascism and ecocide uh, under Bolsonaro. Mm. Um, but more importantly, what we should uh, celebrate is the fact that uh, good old Jair Bolsonaro now gets to to spend his time pursuing what he loves most, and that is contracting novel coronavirus mutations and <laughs> ending up in the hospital. So cheers to Jair. Uh, we wish you nothing but the best and many more cases of COVID to come. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly Send in right. some oxycotton because. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the free market's going to solve that ending up in his hands anyway. Uh, in other news, domestic to the U.S., man bonks Paul Pelosi with hammer. Very funny. <laughs> 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 I, ha I, I haven't kept up with this, actually. Please man do does tell me. Bonk. Why, do pe <laughs> so it's, why do people care? <laughs> uh, because it's, it's Nancy Pelosi's husband. Uh, who was right. assaulted Isn't that a good by? Thing? It, well, I, th that's the thing. The <laughs> Democrats are like, "Whoa, this is a, an assault on you know." It's the same kind of uh, mm. pearl clutching Liberal and hand wringing bullshit, yeah. they've been doing about like January sixth and stuff like that. Um, it was a dude, a forty-two-year-old dude, who wanted to go and, or supposedly intended to go and kidnap uh, or assault Nancy Pelosi in their home. Instead, she was not it's a dangerous there. Dangerous game. She's a witch. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, she's gonna cast fucking <laughs> Wingardio Livios. <laughs> she's gonna make him float. Yeah, that's a, that's a good spell. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. But uh, like... <laughs> Paul was there. Debt them increase <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> You got your goofy hat on today. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Paul was there, sleeping, apparently. It doesn't specify what time of day this is. It, to, to me, the article reads like it was the middle of the day, and he's just, you know, zonked <laughs> and not not working, <laughs> as one would expect uh, from a Pelosi. Um, but so here's how, it, here's how it went down. Homie comes in. He's looking for Nancy Pelosi. Apparently, he had, like, zip ties and uh, not one but two hammers, if I'm reading this correctly. Um <laughs> So he comes it's in. Summer time. Two, two, he two, two, finds two. He, he finds Paul <laughs> uh, who is sleeping. Paul is, is woken up. A struggle ensues. Um, Paul oh, manages damn. to call the police. The police show up and find the two men struggling over a hammer. 
at which mm. point the police officers told the men to drop the hammer. <laughs> Duh, and no, no, uh, no. homie, apparently, um, the assailant supposedly gained control of the hammer while this is happening, bonked Paul on the head, knocked him out. Uh, at this mm. point, the, poli- the police officers stepped in and, and detained the guy. Um, Hold on. What? No, 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 no. Keep talking. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm wondering what is the ethnicity of this person? Uh, um, the assailant? De Pape the is assailant his last name. was a white guy. No wonder he wasn't shot on sight. No wonder. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. Rip. Um, and he's a anyway, right wing. He, he's a right wing white guy. So fucking exactly. Class. I mean, I mean, he was probably hanging out with the cops. So like, all right, go ahead, take your take your uniform off, put on your plain clothes, and go go mess with this guy. We'll watch. But yeah, the 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 police officer secured a roll of tape, white rope, a second hammer. <laughs> He's, in case he needs to reload, a pair of rubber and cloth gloves, not not one or the other. He's got both, uh, and zip ties. Um, and, and apparently he had just broken through the the glass of the back door. There was a conspiracy theory floating around that like Pelosi knew the guy who who did the assaulting. Um, and the, the, <laughs> she, like Ted she wanted Cruz her was, husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she 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 hired the dude. He's like, I need Hammer Bill. Hammer Bill, I need you to show up with both of your hammers and hit my husband. Um, <laughs> TLDR, homie's looking at 30, probably 30 years in prison, which is wild um, for for a hammer attack. But, I mean, also attacking someone with a hammer and, like, attempting to kidnap a, a, a high-ranking member of the United I mean, States government armed with, like, medieval weaponry is very silly. <laughs> so that's just a, an <laughs> odd story. I'm surprised that nobody tried to twist this into saying, oh, the Chinese are, are up to this or some nonsense. Well, um, they're they're using it to... to whip up a furor for the the midterms and say oh you see this is democracy versus fascism this is the most important vote of your lives you have to vote against hammer wielding maniacs oh, yeah. oh boy oh boy have ever ever noticed that every vote is the most important vote yeah, of our lives apparently at this point hmm. uh, uh, we'll, t- we'll talk about that <laughs> i was gonna say though this is there it, it does seem a bit sus because uh, you would think a guy with this sort of temperament would actually have a, a weapon that he would come in with not a fucking hammer okay <laughs> he's not going there to do carpentry he would have a, a pistol or something right uh maybe 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 it's a bit sus maybe it's a bit sus who knows Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> hakeem conspiracy hour Ooh. <laughs> i don't i couldn't give a shit less honestly yeah. i would say things but you're gonna have to bleep them so i'm not even gonna bother <laughs> It's it, and it's so funny. Like both the libs and the neocons are losing their mind in a in a different manner, uh, but everybody's basically attacking uh, relatively principled communists online, which is which are just turning this into a joke. So both the mm. libs and the conservatives are like these people are either soulless or like uh, these people do not threat to our democracy. Uh, true regular uh, the, the the true regular democratic approach and the support for our politicians even if we disagree with them etc cetera, etc cetera. it's uh it's an absolute classic and it it's like a, a, an automated response but because that automated response happens you can very really easily see uh the levels of uh, true belief in people because if if uh, a hammer attack on on the liberal political opponent uh, is something that scares you and something that you condone, my friend. What the fuck do you think a revolution is? Like, yeah. like what? Are you, if this sounds fucking, you know, too violent for you, I mean, I can't say this publicly, yeah. but but dude, <laughs> like, you're in the wrong ideology, my friend. On authority, <laughs> read on authority, <laughs> fucking read on authority. Have these gentlemen Angles. ever seen a man with two hammers? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite JT quote actually is for one of an earlier episode. Is like, oh, yeah. You said, to summarize, <laughs> Engels' quote, have these men ever seen these nuts? <laughs> <laughs> My finest work. <laughs> I, I truly, truly. Oh, man. All right. Uh, I can I can do a, a twofer for you guys because one of them is bullshit and the other one's kind of good news. So the first one is, there's been a bit of a fuss uh, about um, the 2022 United Nations Climate Change Conference, mm. which be, will be held in Egypt. This is something that has been held every year since like the 90s, I think. Um, and it's all the use, use um, fuck, that's a Freudian, that's the Freudian slip of, of uh, two kinds. Because I, was, I want to say it's all the usual, but my mind went to all the useless because that's what it is. It's all the usual <laughs> fucking, uh, what's it called, um, theater, you know, a uh, mm. d- d- an American phrase I've actually read recently, a dog and, and pony show, which, yeah. <laughs> doesn't, yeah. which doesn't make sense to me. I've never seen a dog and a pony show. Um, but uh, 
the meme is that, oh, it's being held in Egypt, and oh my gosh, the fucking oh, human rights abuses in mm. Egypt. Uh, and there are people who are, you know, like, lightly protested this, I guess. And, um, of course, there are claims of greenwashing because Coca-Cola is the official uh, sponsor <laughs> of the event, yeah. um, which plastic. is interesting because I like how they're like, oh, the plastic bottles, not the, the you know, the death squads. But yeah. <laughs> fine. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Your priorities should, should be spread a bit more evenly, but fair enough. Okay, fine. At least you're angry at one thing re- uh, relevant. Mm. But I like the fact that this was like the, the this um, conference has been held in like Canada, uh, in Morocco. Mm. It's mm. been held in Qatar. It's been held in like dozens of European countries almost at this point, right? And every single one, like, <laughs> and but it's not greenwashing there, baby. It's not yeah, greenwashing yeah, 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 there. Exactly. It it just seems so. Uh, I don't know, like performative liberal garbage, yeah. like always. Um, and also, by the way, the, the, the conference is nonsense in and of itself because there's the, the U- recent UN report who was like, oh, yeah, um, the 1.5 degrees Celsius, that, you know, timeline is basically impossible unless revolution is <laughs> yeah. basically what they say. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, unless severe and instant systemic change, <laughs> yeah. which is, you know, uh, mm. I think Lenin, I think Lenin wrote an article t- titled <laughs> 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 severe and systemic. <laughs> but yeah, you understand what I mean. So it's fucking nonsense. Um, swiftly moving on, I'll move on to the good news. Uh, recently, uh, just a, a few days ago, actually, actually as of today, really, um, the uh, Ethiopian civil war has ended, or there's been at least a ceasefire nice. with uh, the prospect of it being over, being yeah, is actually you know within within reach, which is amazing. Uh, for people who don't know about this, because Ukraine has gotten all the stupid fucking attention, I don't know why. Hmm, I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if their skin color has something to do with it, um, or mm. m- more importantly, geopolitical interests of the of the West and the United States and and, and NATO and whatnot. But um, the Ethiopian uh, civil war occurred because uh, in November 2020 there was uh, Ethiopia is more or less a federal country, uh, and there is a region in the north uh, east uh, which is um, had a rebel group t- uh, th- who called themselves. If, get ready for the fucking generic ass name Tigray People's Liberation Front Uh, (laughs) it's it's always the same fucking names Uh, but yeah uh, they used to be they used to be Marxist of some flavor they used to be Hojists if you can believe it (laughs) but 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 now they're just fucking shaking on the ground like yeah sorry hey hey, I I mean at least there was more than 12 Hojists at one point (laughs) Uh, but <laughs> but yeah, uh, but, but no right matter how there, many hoses there are, you can always fit them all in one bunker. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically. I mean, they'll probably split and call each other revisionists <laughs> uh, across the. the, the they'll it will put, be they'll the build first, another bunker with the first meta bunker, uh, a bunker in a bunker. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. But yes, um, so uh, the the civil war erupted over. A mixture of basically ethnic separatism, discrimination against the great people, uh, less economic opportunity for them, their region being more underdeveloped, and of course certain uh, atrocities committed on the part of the central government, uh, a lot of messed up stuff, torture, rape, deprivation of resources, etc., etc. Um, so they were semi-justified, uh, you could say. Uh, in their movement, um, and basically what happened is the Ethiopian government put a blockade on them, uh, and then uh, they uh, basically couldn't control the entire region that the, the Tigray People's Operation Front was acting in, so uh, it uh, controlled this region, basically, more or less. Now, because of many, 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 many um, discussions and, and, and conferences and whatnot, the African Union has reached a solution between the two sides. There's been concessions on both sides, and now it's looking like people can actually return to life, uh, running water and electricity and internet and, and um, mobile connection for phones and whatnot could be returning soon. Um, health, very important healthcare stuff, uh, can be returning to, to uh, the region as well. So very positive news all around. Uh, but they, there's been a lot of commentary, especially in Africa, of you know the hypocrisy of the, of the so-called international community, which means North America, Western Europe, Australia, and South Korea, uh, maybe <laughs> Japan. <laughs> um, but yeah, and how they're basically, you know, uh, they haven't given a shit, the, no uh, international aid, no, you know, oh, let's paint a stupid fucking mural in the central of our city, uh, performative nonsense, nobody get, nobody cared. Um, and there's been a lot of interesting commentary around that. But th- th- these were my two pieces um, for right it's now. It's probably because the the program and maybe like two other uh, insignificant podcasts uh, are the only ones on the Western Hemisphere that have reported <laughs> on what you have just talked about. It's pretty much probably. Yeah. 
I mean, no, it's always funny to me that uh, the countries that presumably have free press and everybody at this point should know the deprogram's opinion on free press. I'm not going mm. to repeat it. Uh, all the countries that presumably have it uh, almost always have the most like unilateral opinion on everything like 70 percent of, those, of uh, yeah. the, the population of uh, almost every western country like believes one specific thing Same about thing, yeah. every yeah. single mm-hmm. foreign policy thing which uh okay brain the other ones for being brainwashed and let's even agree okay all of all the rest of us okay we're all brainwashed okay uh, but uh then accept that you are as well the, 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 at least when when they are brainwashing us we uh, we just turn off the TV or turn to an next channel because like ah these guys are giving us the shit again. But you actually tune in even harder, and it's uh, it's a beautiful sight to see from the side, especially when you try to educate us poor stupid uh, 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 foreign people. It's uh, you know it's it's a classic that never ends up disappointing. Mm, no, for sure. I was just gonna say one quick thing. Um, the 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 big meme of this is yeah they have such a uniformity of opinion that uh, like. If you were to even look at, for example, at any Pravda article, like uh, ed- uh, not edition, like uh, a newspaper, um, they're all scanned, by the way. Some of them are even translated. The amount of dunking they do on uh, like different policies and whatnot, there's such lively debate, even within the official party newspaper, mm. right? Let alone, you know, just in society as a whole. Meanwhile, you go over and say, oh, fucking uh, democracy dar- dies in, in, in fucking darkness or bullshit. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck they say, <laughs> yeah. right? O- owned by the billionaire. And it's literally like, mm, why China is bad? By the way, you're not fucking because... <laughs> <laughs> well, I have an article about that. I'm gonna get into it. So it's like you're not fucking because oh, um, you're working too hard. Not because the work is hard. It's because you're an over. Uh, you're a workaholic. All right. You're just pushing yourself too hard. That's why you're not. Fucking. It's a psychological <laughs> problem. Rice. It's yeah, a new yeah, problem. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> why do you pay bills? You, you take this fucking pill. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> just go and get uh, laid. You know. <laughs> but speaking speaking of concentration of a lot of sex in one uh, group of uh, people. A new, uh, very, very important uh, piece of research has just come out. Uh, It's making headlines here and there for whoever is willing to post it. And that's another confirmation of something that we know, but we should always confirm and we should always use as munition in our artillery to combat the opposing side. So, without further ado, the top 1% of earners in the UK are responsible for the same amount of carbon dioxide emissions in a single year as the bottom 10% for over two decades. New data has shown. The findings Mm -hmm. highlight the enormous gaps between what have been termed the polluting elite, whose high carbon lifestyle fuels the climate crisis, and the majority of people, even in developed countries whose carbon footprints are far, far smaller. Almost always uh, the wealthiest in the world are compared to the poorest in the developing world and very often uh, the right wing uh, debunks that by literally saying if if those poor countries were more developed, they would be spending as much CO2, uh, emitting as much CO2 as, as us. They're just not there yet. They're the same shitholes as us. Well, this research kind of tells a different story because it directly compares uh, a highly industrialized first world country's elite with its own uh, working class population. So it would take 26 years for a low earner to produce as much carbon dioxide as the rich is doing a year. 26 fucking years, bro. You know how much shit I fucking emit in 26 (laughs) years? How the fuck do they emit it in one? But okay, so according to Autonomy's analysis of income and greenhouse gas data from 98 to to 2018, which found that people earning over 170K or more in 2018 in the UK were responsible for greenhouse gas emissions far greater than that of the 30% of people uh, earning 21 K or less in the same year. Uh, and again, this is hardly surprising, but uh, even if we take the most basic reformist approach, if we would to take the 1% of UK earners who are again disproportionately responsible for such a large amount of the UK's gas emissions, and if we 
set a wealth tax on them. A modest tax on the wealthiest 1% of households could raise in the region of 70 billion and be used to contribute significantly to funding a basically for the UK nationwide home insulation program, creating warmer, more comfortable homes and bringing bills down for good. So such a tax will particularly benefit not only the bottom 10%, but according to some estimates, even the bottom 40%, who are, again, the least responsible for emissions. Here we see a direct result of the disproportionality of ownership of wealth uh, in, and in how said wealth could be spent and how it is spent. And it is a direct consequence of the way we organize our economy. And uh, it is a direct link to how our planet is reacting to said economy. Like, <laughs> Mother Earth is literally fucking screaming at us at this point to fucking get it into our thick skulls. But I guess our skulls are even thicker than its Earth. And uh, we are <laughs> nowhere even near her. I was going to say, um, I'm calling it now, before the discussion was, oh, hunger, so let's eat the rich. And if in a few weeks, the the popular tweet will be, uh, uh, turn the rich into biomass for renewable fuel. <laughs> yeah, yeah cut, cut their stomachs open and crawl inside for warmth. <laughs> <laughs> this is for Ukraine. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, in some exciting and not very surprising news, the U.S. is spinning up our very own Ministry of Truth, to quote literally oh 1976, um, <laughs> and with, with the goal of manipulating social media narratives. Now, this is a an effort what? that is being spearheaded by the DHS, the Department of Homeland mm -hmm. Security, which was oh, for... Uh, the, yeah, the my, my, my friends. You invited, hey, hey, guys, you invited over for, for coffee. <laughs> I was confused Hi, with the guys that deliver my fucking, email, my fucking mail, the DHS. Yes. <laughs> not yeah. those guys, yeah. not those guys. Um, but they are working with the FBI in what capacity. It's not entirely clear. There's also some indication that the CIA is involved. So this is a big oh operation. So let, let me rewind just a little bit. So this kind of began earlier in the year when it was announced that the DHS was forming what they called a disinformation governance board, which is a uh -huh. panel designed to police misinformation. Um, and, but not only misinformation, which is which they're calling false information spread unintentionally, but also disinformation, which is false information spread intentionally. And the most mm -hmm. important for, for outlets like ours, uh, malinformation, mm -hmm. which I had never heard before, which they are calling factual information shared typically out of context with harmful intent. So that, I see. you know, that's basically just them saying uh, anything that makes the U.S. look bad. Yeah, we're going to censor that. Um, which is incredibly sus. I mean, the, you know, you know, <laughs> top of the list, boys. <laughs> we're at the top yeah, of the list. We're there. <laughs> so if we disappear, uh, we've been we've been designated as malinformation. Yeah. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but there was a. Um, if you read the article, it's actually a really good long uh, article by um, the Intercept. Um, there's a direct portal for government officials to demand content uh, be taken down or suppressed so that fewer eyes can see it uh, on Facebook and Instagram. And it's not clear how much it's affecting other platforms like Twitter, uh, YouTube, uh, Spotify just yet. There was a big outlash uh, regarding the, the Disinformation Governance Board, and publicly they said, okay, we're going to shut this down. Um, but according to this study, they are absolutely still working on it behind closed doors mm. and have been trying to expand it and have been working with government officials to, to develop what they're considering like uh, an expansion of the counterterrorism uh, apparatus, which was, you know, founded uh, with at the same time as the advent of the 24 hour news cycle, mm. uh, invasion of Iraq. Um, so it's it's we're seeing what we've long expected would be the case, yeah. a further crackdown on uh, on any kind of dissent, any kind of left wing. Uh, opposition to to U.S. meddling abroad. One of the things they've specifically stated they're going to be cracking down on is criticism of the U.S. reasons for being in Ukraine. So that right there is a mm. giant red flag. Yeah. 
I mean, literally to quote the department plans to target, quote, inaccurate information. And then I'm like, okay, what the fuck is that? On a wide yeah. range of topics, including the origins of COVID-19, the yeah. efficacy of the vaccine, racial justice, ooh, U.S. withdrawal <laughs> from Afghanistan, and the nature of U.S. support to Ukraine. And then they continued saying, the challenge is particularly acute in marginalized communities, the report states, which are often the target of false or misleading information. Basically, they're saying the fucking browns and the blacks and the poor <laughs> yeah. whites don't understand understand too anything stupid, yeah. so we need mm -hmm. to make sure that they read only our version of uh, of the events and our version of the truth i mean mm -hmm. we we have a, a kind of touched on this uh, multiple times and in my opinion the the absolute savagely beautiful uh lack of control on the internet is an incredible thing but yeah, sourcing well. and uh adequate reporting and uh, the difference between real journaling and just writing whatever comes uh, to the top of your head is also if not equally important as well but one does not have to eat uh, and parasite the other we can we can create a system which encourages uh, properly sourced uh, uh, material and the stop and through it limit the spreading of uh, very malicious uh, fake news without impact without having to set boundaries and walls inside of the internet which do not allow for a certain uh, certain type of speech and uh, nobody in power is interested in that particular approach because what would their motivation be uh, for why they would like to have set any limits to what can be said online and what cannot. Mm. Obviously, because they want to limit any, as you properly said, JT, any dissenting information or anything that is contrary to the to the status quo. And as it always happens throughout history, the most uh -huh. the the only speech that you can absolutely never ever uh, kind of. Uh, um, Capitalize lies, ca capitalismize. The only thing you cannot <laughs> capitalismize is class conscious rhetoric. So it will yeah, be always 100% a target. So no matter how much any of our listeners, which are uh, left leaning or radical left wingers or some people on the fence, if you are anywhere towards the left of the center, understand that you will eventually be a target of such policies. No matter how much you hate fake yep. news, no matter how much your grandpa pisses you off when he starts starts talking about the Holocaust not happening. This, in the long term, will hit you. So we should always be very, very adamantly against it. Uh, and especially if it's in the control of, uh, of uh, a cap capitalist state or, God forbid, the private hands. I was just going to say, the, the complete and utter control that the modern capitalist state has over media mm. and manipulation of media and who says what, who is allowed to say what, and then being able to know who says, for example, you or me or anybody else, like down to the IP address phone, like uh, geo coordinates, everything is unparalleled. And we've been told that the very basic, meager, like frankly pathetic abilities of, for example, the Soviet administration or even East Germany of uh, trying Fucking to control mean. this sort of information. Yeah, they, they tell us that that was the absolute height of totalitarianism. Mm. It was a complete uh, uh, destruction and, and disregard for human rights, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to capitalists, they doing fucking leagues and, 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 you know, like significantly more. All of a sudden, oh, it's just status quo. Oh, there's to, to fight misinformation, etc. Et it's such a it's such fucking bullshit. It's for our own good. But, yeah, it's for our benefit. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no ulterior Guys, motive. this is, it's, it's truly 1962, okay? I don't know what to tell you. 1864, <laughs> all right? It's <laughs> literally 2009. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That was actually exactly. terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I have actually I have something that's that's relevant to this actually. I like how the the what's it called the U.S. government can get away with this. Meanwhile, we have a B, an Al Jazeera article, excuse me, published by uh, the, um, the, Ch the 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 Human Rights Watch uh, um, uh, senior researcher Yaku Wang. Um, now ooh, you hold on just like a goddamn minute, Al Jazeera. That sounds like one of them terrorists. It is exactly as one of them, one of them, one of the raghead ones. Um, I can say that because I myself am raghead. <laughs> hey, I've been called a raghead by Americans in my country, so I, wow, I reserve geez, the right to use class. this term. Uh, <laughs> no, that's next way, level. That is class. Like, yeah. what the? F what are you looking at me, you guy dressed yeah. the? Typical way people dress here, you motherfucker. You know, funnily like, enough, we don't do that. Like, aside from like either Bedouins or people in like uh, what's it called, um, rural areas, 
like most city pe- people don't wear head coverings like especially men don't wear head coverings i don't know what the fuck you gotta see the to hair mean. you gotta see the real yeah. tall hair <laughs> yeah the very thing that's why <laughs> exactly right <laughs> no, exactly right there's yeah, no co- would there's, the you would spend so much material for the head coverings like it's non-economic <laughs> <laughs> exactly right yeah. it's towering oh my God. you just you just drape a fucking sheet over your head uh, anyways, <laughs> just but, walk out yeah. with the bed so, 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 so this fucking this fucking lady Yaku Wang she published or she brought up an opinion piece and it's titled why Twitter under Elon Musk is good news for China's rulers yeah. Mark's acquisition has created an opportunity for China to influence the discourse on the social media platform and it's a so lot that's why it's bad uh huh okay. yeah. yeah 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 and, and like it's it's the usual shit like it mentions some guy in the article where he actually committed a crime he actually spread misinformation. Uh, mm-hmm. in China about uh, COVID rule, about pandemic rules or something, right as it was beginning in China. And then he got a fine. And she's like, oh, this is a fucking human right. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, well, you know, you, you're you fucking, you're an idiot. You're not supposed to be doing this. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, uh, my, my point being is the entire opinion article has her, uh, the, the meme being that, oh, um, uh, Musk has been getting cozy because of his like interests, like a financial interest in China, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And the, she twists it around by starting to like quote uh, Washington Post and all this kind of stuff, and the end of the the, the article, she's like, "Oh, um, they uh, Musk will allow China to to spread more disinformation, and uh, China himself, uh, themselves have stepped up efforts to spread disinformation disinformation on the platform in recent years." Uh, and her the meme being is that. Oh, um, uh, w- what's my evidence? Uh, the Chinese have asked politely that they, they remove the state media, uh, like Chinese state media, <laughs> yeah. on basically every person that isn't even, by the way, related. Like um, some, even semi-independent, what's yeah. it called, uh, news Journalist, sources in China, yeah. have Chinese state media thing underneath them, which is... Or just um, spread it to everyone. Yeah. Anybody who's related to any, any state, or I would... Ex- expropriated in a way any corporation any company should have the specific institution they are affiliated with either do it 100 percent or don't do the fucking affiliation yeah. thing at all you have to have one particular approach and since musk came in he started adding state affiliated for other countries as well like slowly germany state affiliated ukraine state affiliated uh, yeah when fucking, are we getting you know, oligarch Canadian. media affiliated i want to see <laughs> that slap on the washington post no, that's exactly. not going to happen um, but it might happen if they're from China or if they're from <laughs> Russia or if they're from I don't fucking know what's the yeah. who do we don't Chattanooga. like yeah. yeah the program uh, state affiliated yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's the only one the only source I I, uh, I rely on um, I love by the way at the end of the Al Jazeera article the, it states the views expressed in this article are the author's own and do not necessarily reflect Al Jazeera's <laughs> editorials I'm like well you published it so I don't know what to tell you mm. um, but yeah it's, it's the usual fucking it's the usual cringe um i like how for example uh, breaking quarantine uh during a huge uh, pandemic and then getting a fine for that oh yeah you know that uh, oh yeah, human rights abuse Must but literally age. killing minorities <laughs> yeah killing minorities in the straight in the u.s and then the, the cop who did it gets basically a vacation paid yeah, vacation uh-huh. out of it that's not fucking these people i swear to god <laughs> We will not be remembered fondly, and that's something that uh, that, that gives me solace when I am spiraling. Mm-hmm. Like, eventually, people will look back and think, "Yeah, the U.S. was an evil mm-hmm. empire, wasn't it?" Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be. You know, you're always gonna have some fucking chuds, some absolute jackass yeah. fucking, you know, uh, what's it called edge lord who's like, actually, no, 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 he's gonna have the stupid, the stupid. Um, have you seen that variation of the American flag where it's a stupid eagle? Uh, the, the 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 bald head eagle, B- bald head eagle, bald headed <laughs> eagle. Excuse me, on the fucking flag, uh, right? Or the 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 skull one, the Punisher yeah. skull oh, one. The Punisher right? one drives me crazy. Dear yeah. Chud listeners, the Punisher mm. hates cops. That's the whole point yeah. of the show. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, uh, but I'm sorry, isn't there like an actual thing about defacing the... I thought there was a law yes, against defacing you, the American... you're not supposed to like wear the American flag or put it on apparel or or change uh-huh. it in any way. Like that's mm-hmm. that was the original idea. It's like this is supposed to be a symbol. You're not supposed to like commercialize it. And it's on everything. That is the most broken law in that fucking country. It's, uh, uh, the, yeah. the American flag was meant to be play, uh, slapped on bikinis to sell burgers, okay? <laughs> to sell fast food. <laughs> to, right? to quote Bill Burr walking next to a beach and seeing a kid uh, he's like uh, what is that uh, 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 a kite uh, it's a, is that an American flag kite you know what that means guys 
future racist. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, they put it on fucking everything. It's incredible. You actually see it all over the world. I see people wearing America yeah. t-shirts whenever, wherever oh, I go. God, it's a vibe. Cringe. It's an aesthetic. It's a... It's that's cringe. not something we see here, thankfully. Uh, we're more fond of burning them, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, this is, it, it, it burns extra bright. I don't know. Maybe it's the freedom. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> go on. Go on, you opening. Um, Give us another. You, uh, Hakim already kind of started, initiated uh, one of this evening's main uh, conversation points, and that is Elon Musk acquiring Twitter for quadrillion seven billion dollars. Uh, this <laughs> basically uh, he's going to lose it all, baby. Acquisition <laughs> has come after uh, him doing it once, and then saying he's not going to do it, and then saying he's going to do it for the second time, then checking it out again, then getting it uh, again after uh, engaging in some uh, freedom of speech conversations online. Obviously, that's not the case. He purchased it mostly in order to uh, offload some of the uh, capital which can potentially be lost from Tesla, Tesla stocks uh, down spiraling eventually as the as the crisis increases. Obviously, it's a bit more complex, but I don't want to bore you with that sort of shit. Uh, and moving that into into an enterprise which, yes, is hemorrhaging money, but is kind of a institution at this point, uh, both on the internet and in people minds which is the most important thing in the market institutionalized in the people's minds literally a broker told me this but huh. it's mm -hmm. uh um but yes so capital there should be relatively stable but obviously this uh, incredibly financialized move by literally one of the richest people on planet earth uh, has been spun in a sort of a geeky ass uh try hard reddit boy personal advertising stunt of saying that he is coming to save the day, to save freedom of speech, to uh, bring Twitter back to its uh, original glory days of being a place of uh, the diverse opinions, uh, etc., etc. And everybody fucking loved it. Millions of likes on uh, uh, on Twitter, which, by the way, uh, uh, Bill Burr, to quote him again, once made a joke about how he's against genocide, but if we were to <laughs> blow up all the people on cruise ships... Uh, yeah. The world we, would be a better place. Yeah. I have a much greater idea, Bill. If anybody likes, so we create like a laser-guided uh, missile system, but very precise that can just go through a skull. So every time somebody likes an Elon Musk tweet, it just goes through his brain, right? Uh, I would go even more extreme. Uh, bleep that. Uh, but... Uh, Obviously, he came in uh, riding like riding in like Superman. Uh, but what did he? What was the first move Elon uh, committed to? Literally, his first posts were about uh, how advertisers should not be afraid. How advertising is still going to have a very important place on Twitter. Basically, making sure that he does not hemorrhage any money, and he will slowly start turning Twitter into a more profitable venture not a more freedom of speech accepting venture. Uh, I have kind of a theory on this. Uh, follow me through it. Basically, I think we have gotten to a point where uh, media moguls, and not only them, but people like Musk entering the media sphere, have actually understood that the whole like canceling thing it doesn't really, really happen for like 95% of people. Unless you Henry Weinstein and you literally rape women, uh, you, your career will continue. Actually, by openly saying that you're getting canceled, your career will most likely even skyrocket because it will attract right-wing chuds, which will further grow your platform. So them understanding that, under, uh, understood that advertisers as well don't really give a flying fuck. Like the YouTube ad craze from 10 years ago, if you remember, kind of put it in all of our brains that advertisers don't want to advertise on a video that's bigoted. Advertisers don't want to go to a platform which espouses one or the other ideology. Uh, they've experimented around and turns out no, not really. Advertisers don't care. They want to sell toothpaste, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, neo, uh, neocon chuds also have teeth. So <laughs> uh, th this kind of traditionalizing of social media is a reaction to the market realizing that uh, having two opposing sides present 
and uh, one of them being an insanely bigoted uh, crowd will not hurt the profit margin. So if it doesn't hurt the profit margin and you have more eyeballs on your site, which will now be migrating back to Twitter from all the chud platforms that they went to, uh, is literally going to rank in the big bucks. And that is what I think Musk's kind of policy is going to be hidden behind the wall of, oh, you know, I'm doing this for free speech. He's literally going to increase the amount of people using Twitter by opening the floodgates again to uh, to neocons. And that's going to start basically with the reinstatement of Donald Trump's uh, uh, Twitter page, which I think is, should absolutely be done because my life has been <laughs> Bring him back. Put him in, so coach. much worse. Dude, it's <laughs> fine. I, I, miss, I, miss, I miss Cheeto Man. Uh, but, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, that is my little conspiracy theory on uh, from, again, a guy that's relatively decent at the poisonous craft of advertising on what his kind of uh, business uh, process uh, logic is. And I think it would work really well because, again, they want to sell toothpaste and fascists also have teeth. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Uh, beautifully said. I couldn't have said it better myself. I could have, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right G- give us your next one Habibi. uh in other news we have armed fascist goons posting up at polling stations here in the u.s for the midterms to uh, according to them prevent the police fraud. you mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> honestly the police aren't doing anything about it. i'm sure it's mostly off-duty cops um yeah. but you know people with their stupid american flag mask things carrying their m4s their you know civilian issue m4s that are, are semi-automatic <laughs> But they are like posting up at like early voting um, drop boxes, you know, where people can, you know, do their ballot and drop it off and then it gets counted. But these guys have it in their heads that that is a, a major source of fraud, that they're like making a bunch of like truckloads of fake Democrat ballots and like just mm. dumping them in these in these voting things. Um, so you've got like normal people just walking up to these these polling stations, and there are these freaks mm. like harassing them with guns all day, and it's just it's ugh, it's pathetic, it's annoying, mm. um, but it also does kind of show that this undercurrent of fascism is no longer really an undercurrent. It's just kind of the way the Republicans are. Um, what a functioning democracy. Right, exactly. But, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I know this is what I'm about to say is an incredibly washed out like point, like a gotcha by all commies all the time. But imagine a pro one mm. party, yeah. armed militia yeah. standing in front of <laughs> voting spots in any yeah. other country. Just yeah, imagine yeah, yeah, no. the yeah, articles. How would that be covered? Hmm. I know it's a cliche, but every time it just works. It's a it's a, a, a ace of all G-T-Q- cards. What the fuck mm, is that term? Yeah, ace yeah. of all Joker. The, there's the, there's the there's the Trump card. There's the the ace, ace in the sleeve. Of, yeah. There's no there is something I agree ace with. With the sleeve, you. There's okay. ace of all ace of all something. There, yeah, there's, there's jack of all like trades. Is what you're jack thinking. of all ah, trades. Jack and ace of all trades. Of <laughs> 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 you got me. It's running. It's rubbing off of me now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But I was, I was gonna say, <laughs> what's uh, rubbing off of me is my ass off of my skin from how much it fucking hurts. Oh, oh by the, oh, oh, this this uh, chili has like ten out of ten on it. Oh, you got like you're a tough mm. man. You can eat that. <laughs> yeah, I mean I am. Oh, but, mood. You know, yeah, fucking toxic mm. masculinity there, there, burning my ass off. There, literally, there are some there are some people in in in, in our Discord who would pay to be your your uh, burning <laughs> asshole right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was I gonna say? <laughs> Uh, well, GT, we can we can think of a certain tier, you know, maybe. Yeah. Genuinely, yeah. I was gonna say, GT, please, why aren't you petitioning Xi Jinping? My 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 people here for freedom. <laughs> I have concerns Honestly, about the point. the legitimacy of these elections. Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely, Jesus Christ! I was reading about as you do. Uh, I was reading about election fraud in the U.S. and. I think it's happened every single election in yeah. U.S. history at this point. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? How how did people really fall into the propaganda that the U.S. is in any way democratic or a reasonable fucking democracy? It started oh, at the uh, very beginning, hundreds of years uh, now that we've had this, this propaganda. You, no, no. What's worse is that there are people outside of the U.S. that believe this shit. Yeah. Americans, I, I don't blame. They're, you're built into the system with stupidity from the beginning. Mm. You can't help believing what you've been told from day one. But people are outside who can see, look in from the outside and like, you know what? Yeah, that looks like a good model to follow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Man. 
That's because most people's only experience is movies. Is yeah, yeah. We export our our ideology. Cringe, cringe. But that's video. all. That's all I really had for that. I can. I'll cover the the actual very exciting midterm races uh, towards the end of mm-hmm. the episode. But thought it merited a discussion, a little bit of a mention that we've got actual fascist goons posting up mm-hmm. at voting stations now. Good to know. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with with the. Well, so do you guys know the, the hit the, you the with the Peter beef? No, 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 no. That's all. <laughs> well, no, no. I'm gonna hit guy. you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hit you with the. I'm gonna hit you with the Peter Griffin meme. You know where he's like, oh, sweet man made horrors beyond my comprehension. <laughs> beyond my comprehension. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, oh, that's hey, good. that's, that's okay. <laughs> dude. You and your fuck. You and your your. <laughs> oh, you really hit me with the blick there. Oh lord. Yeah. Uh, please stop speaking gibberish. You go. <laughs> Stop talking Zoomer. <laughs> I can't. I can't hear you, Grandpa. Start uh, like speak harder into the mm. Um, mm. microphone. It's a. Oh, do you hear? Me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, um, I can't. I'm doing the blick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shakes fucking <laughs> hips weirdly. Oh Jesus, guys! What are you doing, guys, grandson? Guys, guys, listen, listen. Your next in- your next job interview could take place in virtual reality. That's a title oh. from a BBC headline by uh, Elizabeth Hodson. Not only. Is it, uh, what's it called, a, a job and interview um, via virtual reality, but the interviewer person will be an AI, a oh fictional thing. It won't be a human <laughs> being. It will be an AI. Probably with, better which, than HR, honestly. Mm. Yeah, pr- pretty much, pretty Sounds much. Sounds like I know an improvement. Your response was not recognized. Please try again. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it might be it might be the mother of all Karens, where mm. it just it, um, it, like absorbs all the worst HR traits into itself. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was gonna say um, the, the, to quote um, their avatars, cartoon like three D representations of themselves, were put through their paces by another talking avatar representing the AI uh, AI software system. So that's what you'd you'd have to uh, to endure. <laughs> you'd have to be told. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> that you're going to be let go two weeks before uh, what's it called <laughs> rent two two days before rent payment is due oh. uh, and then as you break down and cry exactly. they uh, you look cr- you, you're crying like my rent is due or my child is just about to be born and, and the AI is like uh, cannot respond please type again by the way do you want do you want to know why, why they're th- the way that they're twisting this mm. how they're trying to be like oh it's actually a good thing they're saying that oh it removes biases Prejudice, and it makes yeah. people mm. yeah it makes yeah. people more comfortable uh, because it's not actually you it's a it's a uh, avatar of some sort but like who trained I your mean, AI who trained yeah, your AI exactly. motherfucker where does yeah. ideology yeah. come from <laughs> haven't you seen they, they've already like an interesting field of research is racism within yeah. AI like yep. learning algorithms it's fucking right um and by the way when people there's this actually even mentioned the articles like uh has it been stress tested to, uh, stress tested to eliminate bias does it eliminate gender bias and how does it do that of course no mention of race for some reason yeah. uh and the one of the official fucking spokespeople or the npc spokespeople says i would be hesitant in advocating that ai is used exclusively in the interview process i think there should be some sort of human intervention somewhere God. so at that point basically you're defeating the, the, the yeah. point of, God, <laughs> these fucking ghouls honestly <laughs> But, but, yeah, even, of course but, but you're you're too class conscious, even from like the super selfish perspective. Like AI can't really put into account personality. So we would have offices literally just filled with very interesting people that, you know, still have the job but got hired by humans and like the most fucking soulless vampires that the AI <laughs> loved because it doesn't account for personality. You know, it would just hire based on one hundred percent C V, not at least some sort of like ability. Which is like that, like ability is like what gets sixty percent of work done inside of uh, office spaces. But it's mm-hmm. just uh, leave it yeah. to dumbass tech bros to think they can fucking solve uh, solve problems for uh, spheres that they never even fucking interacted with, except that one interview that got them that fucking tech job in the first mm-hmm. place. I was gonna say, by the way, of course, of course, there's a big portrait of some dirty white guy with an unkept beard and fucking messy hair, like he just got out of bed, looking like smugly into the camera, and he says, um, uh, "What's it called for for uh, practicing? Like, oh, this the point of this is to practice interviews. This won't actually be used for interview processes, right?" Mm-hmm. Uh, and to quote him, he says, "Things things like communication, empathy, and leadership are the secrets to success. But how can you practice those if you're rich? You can get a coach. Otherwise, you have e-learning, but that doesn't work as you're lacking immersion." So basically, he's saying like, oh, like we'll have this thing, which, by the way, you'll also most likely have to pay for if you were going to use. Um, God. I, I just, the fucking... Point I have, stupid. I have grown through corporate ranks fast, like three times faster than any of my, not any, 95% of all of my uh, fellow college graduates that I graduated with. 
It's not about personality that I mentioned before. It's not about practicing your CV, uh, practicing your interview skills, blah, blah, blah. It's about lying out of your fucking ass, but <laughs> repairing those lies very carefully so that when you are mm. asked sub questions for said lies, you can reply, mm. them, uh, reply to them. And then once you get into the job, actually, yes, yeah, sitting down and uh, learning how to do the shit that you just fucking lied about. That is 85 fucking percent of it yeah. and if somebody's selling you a tutorial on how to get better or like mm. software that makes your cv look flashier hr does like give a fuck they're literally looking for the text to read through etc mm. all of most of them don't even read exactly okay. yeah. exactly mm. all of this type of advice that is is trying to in a similar way the way oxycotton did by saying oh there's levels of pain and then if you are in severe pain then you need uh, higher grams of heroin they're trying to tell you that the process of interviewing is more complex than it actually is in order to sell you their grift, etc., etc. These guys do it through software. Consultants do it through, uh, you know, paid webinars, etc., mm. etc. Et and everybody's trying to push some sort of fucking grift Bullshit. on you. It's fucking simple. It really is simple. They're looking for a set of skills. Does it exist at your age, at your skill level? Absolutely fucking doesn't. So how do I get the job? You fucking lie. Because all the other motherfuckers are fucking lying. I was just gonna say because the liberal on the wall start fucking jingling, J jingling. Not j what? What? What does a bell do? It tolls. It rings. Chiming, rings. And they start yeah. ringing. Chiming. Yeah, basically. J j jing, jing. They start. They start jingling. Okay. Um. But yeah, what was it's I gonna say? Is it, yeah. Oh my uh, god. Fuck me, dude. Uh, the the <laughs> Yugopnik didn't say it, but I'm gonna just add commentary. There is a place for opioids in medicine, but there is a problem with overprescription. Doesn't mean that but opioids. I, I, yeah, I know, but there's some people are gonna oxycotton specifically. Yeah, 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 oxycotton yeah, 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 specifically. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. And if somebody yeah, defends even then, oxy, even then. then Jesus yeah. Christ. I mean, no, technically, I'm not gonna. But specifically, with, with the various sorts of opioids, they do generally have of uses. Course, they, of course. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I know you know that. But there's gonna be some jackass fucking liberal <laughs> on my wall or in the real fucking. Medication fucking, good. Like, hey, fucking. Medication yeah. good. Medication good. In strong good, moderation. Yes. With with yeah. No, no, no. Uh, take take input. your fucking meth with your whiskey. Like, <laughs> exactly right. Bless exactly you. right. I'm, I'm yeah. done trying to explain what the fuck I'm trying to say when I talked about <laughs> pills. <laughs> Just done. Do you? Speaking of doing you, you got me. Give us a, give us a, another. So, uh, the, the United States of America have been rather jealous in, since February 24th. Another large country from across the world has engaged in a violent fight against another state. For the first time in a long while, when we talk about <laughs> mass-scale warfare, the United States is not in absolutely every single one of the news articles. So... Everybody in the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times is getting uh, quite literally dope sick, but their dope mm -hmm. is wanting war. Haiti has been troubled with mass protests and deaths after the ousting of the previous and the new installment of the self-declared leader of Haiti. I am not going to comment on the particular political situation there, uh, which the Haitian people, I hope, managed to resolve as quickly as possible. For the people of Haiti to choose their own governors and the direction in which they want to uh, go. Uh, obviously, this uh, island nation uh, was not on the radar of any larger U.S. political newspapers until this uh, set of events started occurring. Uh, and uh, one plus one, uh, starting with the Wall Street Journal, we have started seeing open invitations for the U.S. State Department to intervene in this place which cannot establish, literally quoting, uh, democracy on its own at this current point. The United States, to quote uh, Velina E. Charlie when uh, she went recently, a Haitian woman, to, to, to the U.S. in order to denounce any sort of requests towards the U.S. for intervention, said that the United States, quote, has always followed a paternalistic and interventionist approach that often fails to serve the best interests of the Haitian people. Through its embassy in the capital, the U.S. has continued to support leaders who have emerged 
emerged from fraudulent elections or corrupt governments that have lost all popular legitimacy. She noted that international intervention of all sorts has greatly contributed to bringing Haiti to the brink of collapse. But since not all Haitians and Haitian organizations are represented by what she is a member of called the Accord, maybe, you know, Haiti is the Haitian people who take to the streets and demonstrate and those brave enough to risk possible repression to speak to local and foreign reporters maybe deserve a so-called U.S. intervention is basically the argument that we are seeing from most mainstream sources that are writing on the topic. Uh, is it going to happen? Is it not? It depends on many different uh, the currents in the inter international uh, world of geopolitics. But one thing that we all know very well, for because it's been done like at least 300 billion times at this point, is that a large military coming in armed to the teeth and blowing shit up absolutely never leads to the improvement of the situation on the ground. So even in places where uh, shit is hitting the fan quite literally, uh, we should always have a very strong anti-war stance, not out of some liberal moralist perspective, not even out of a socialist anti-imperialist standpoint, but just from the point of doing basic maths, but basic bots, man's not hot, uh, that <laughs> states quite literally that it does not fucking work ever, even when it comes to establishing basic liberal democracies. What do you guys think? Should we blow the fuck out of uh, Haitians? <laughs> yes, I mean, of course, we're on the, uh, the National Endowment for Democracy's payroll, so <laughs> uh. we're obligated. The, the contract states... Again, I'll say what I said at the beginning of the episode. Whatever I'm going to say will require bleeping. So, um, yeah. But basically, something, something, anti-American sentiment, something, something. <laughs> <laughs> Calls yep. for violence, something, something. <laughs> well said to both of you. Well said. Well, listeners, democracy is on the ballot this year. Uh, and they say oh, that boy. every year. Uh, and nothing <laughs> changes. But uh, this time, it's, it's, you know, it's definitely on the ballot this year. Prom I promise you. Trust me. It's, it's, it's democracy or fascism. Donate now to make sure fascism is defeated once and for all. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> Look, all right, I get it. Midterms are uh, incredibly boring, but there are a couple that I've jotted down here that are at least vaguely interesting. So let's start right. with Ohio. Serenitas. Yes. Ohio, we've got J.D. Vance, the Republican, versus Tim Ryan, the Democrat. These people sound like they don't exist, but all right, go on. They sound <laughs> yeah, like made NPCs. up names. <laughs> yeah. J.D. Vance is the guy who wrote Hillbilly Elegy, a garbage book that was turned into an even worse movie. Uh, he's also one of billionaire Peter Thiel's long-term investments. Uh, Vance worked at a Thiel firm and has accepted his libertarian utopia but for billionaires programming. I'm actually doing a, um, a collab with More Perfect Union about Peter Thiel, which is... Um, it's, it's pretty interesting. He's a, he's a messed up guy. Um, Tim yeah. Ryan is incredibly dull, but at least he's not part of a secret cabal of insane libertarian world builders. Just the regular cabal of do-nothing Democrats who hate the poor a little less outspokenly. Anyway, that's Ohio. We've got J.D. Vance versus Tim Ryan, folks. Again, Thrilling. the second you said the second you said hillbilly elegy, I, I'm like, yeah. Again, this <laughs> yeah. is this is NPC video. Game. This does this is not real. This sounds like what Japanese people think American politics are like <laughs> in, in like a PlayStation Two game. Yeah, Sorry, go that, I love that image. The uh, what are some of the the names they have? Sleeve McDykel. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Im if you guys haven't seen it, look up. Um, Japanese baseball video game American names. It'll come up. I think we've talked mm. about it before. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah we have. Mm. Um, the other one I wrote down is Pennsylvania. You've probably heard of this one. It's Dr. Oz, the Republican, mm -hmm. versus Fuck. John oh, Fetterman. Oh, 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 that is the greatest fight of all fucking time. That makes me <laughs> turn it? off the fucking UFC, man. It fucking just tune right oh the fucking. God. Oh, my God. I grew up on, on Dr. Oz. That, was, that shit was playing in the motherfucking living room yeah. every fucking time I went to my grandma's. She mm -hmm. probably has caused more irreversible damage to herself and her neighbors by quoting that motherfucker yeah. to them than mm -hmm. all of the fucking 
NATO radiation bombs that fucking <laughs> fell on your fucking house. Like that that oh dude God. is a one man walking uh, war crime. I fucking love him. I would ironically <laughs> vote for this fucking the Oh my God. I fucking <laughs> clap just to see what happens. Just to see how worse it can get. Absolutely fucking wild. <laughs> that dude does coke. That dude does coke one bit. Oh, absolutely. Percent. 100%. Sure. 100%. So coke, much adrenochrome, coke. virgin blood, all of it. Absolutely. And he's, like, and he's one of those like po- posh coke doers, you know, not the motherfucker that, you know, just bumps, you know, goes into the toilet. He's another guy doing is like, dude, here's like 50 bucks. Can I do a fucking like, no, this guy like orders it special, like yeah. 100% pure, <laughs> it come, like Colombian. It comes in a dish. Yeah. <laughs> it, comes, yeah, it comes in like special wooden box, you know, with yeah. the, the blood of Latino children spilled all over yes. it, you know. He and likes his wood, coke. With, with, yeah, with, his coke with, red. Oh, with notes of oats of lime. <laughs> doesn't even fucking anyway. snort it drinks it like a fucking okay. lemonade sorry <laughs> guy this, this guy I would make movies about this man I swear to fucking god I'm so passionate I'm sure we'll get one eventually sorry, sorry yeah go on anyway for those who aren't aware uh, <laughs> Dr. Oz is a TV personality he was on Oprah for a while I think and then he got his own mm. show I believe um, He, but he's known for pushing pseudoscientific miracle cures and questionable medical practices now his competitor is a large man, and these are important <laughs> credentials to the average American. Do we want a quack doctor or a big fella? Just a real <laughs> hefty on. son of a gun. <laughs> the guy's literally called Fatter Man. Hold on. Let me see. <laughs> what? Anyway, Fetterman. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Fetterman. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> don't you should run with. <laughs> Choose anyway, me I, I, what I say is. I am, choose me because I am fatter, man. <laughs> Guys, look at this fucking photo. There's he's a big fella. Of this, of this dude, of this dude overlooking like, oh, yeah. Biden from the side, and he he's just has like this weird. <laughs> very rectangular, very upright, very, very blocky. I like it. Anyway, what I say, boys, is that enough with these pencil neck dweebs. The people will make their voices heard and usher in a new era of big guy <laughs> politics, goddammit. That's all I want. I want big fellas in positions of power again. I want to turn on the TV and say, wow, look at that fella. Look, he's, a wa- real, he's a real man. First time we disagree on this fucking podcast, I want coked up menaces <laughs> to society ruling your country, okay? Big fella's pretty decent option, but the other is far more exciting. Guys, 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 Teen Vogue has an article titled, John and Giselle Fetterman are fighting for the American working class. Mm. <laughs> Comrade Fetterman. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's, he's, not, he's not bad. Like, I've listened to some of his stuff. Um, he does have like garbage takes liberal. on on like China yeah, and stuff like that. Obviously, obviously. Um, but yeah, I thought those are the only two ones I care about. Honestly, that's all I know or care to know about the midterms. After <laughs> a few cycles of of watching the same old story play out again and again, it does get a little old. Like every time the right mm. claims that oh the radical left has taken over the country and we need to purge the dirty Jew, uh, 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 I mean the far left fascist <laughs> communists from government, and the Democrats plead with voters and say that oh if we just had you know two more seats we could keep our promises. But then every time they move the goalposts <laughs> when they have the numbers they need. Guys, guys. He worked for two years in Pittsburgh as a risk management underwriter for an insurance company titled Chubb. Chubb Limited. Yes, Chubb. <laughs> the big man from Chubb. Vote for the big man from Chubb. <laughs> what is oh his last God. name? What is his name? Fetterman. F-E-T-T-E-R-M-A-N. Fetterman. So, so, so fat man from Chubb is running... It's incredible. And <laughs> dear listener, he's not a fat guy. Like, we're not making fun of, like, it's not, like, fat phobia or anything. He's just what? a big, hefty no, fella. No, no, no. He's, he's no, you know, strong, is, square he's man. He's huge. He, yeah. he, looks like he's, he looks like he's three meters tall. No. Yeah, he's a big I, guy. I, I just made... I just made a stupid joke about the name. It's and there's no fucking fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but someone will call it out. They, I mean, someone will mention it. They always do. This is, does, you know, friends, dear listeners, we're good people. Uh, I'm giving us a blank dismissal for everything we ever say. I am, um, I am yeah, fat. Exactly right. I am fat, and I'm giving you a fat shaming uh, <laughs> pass. Both of you, go forth and fat. Oh, shame. oh wow. The guy, anyway. the guy sketch, the guy sketch, he's super pro Israel sketch. Sketch. Yeah, he, yeah, I don't give a shit to... how I don't I don't care how much you want to raise the minimum wage. If you're pro Israel, you can get yeah, I'm not, I'm not even gonna Yeah, he's got some anyway, sus, sorry, go sus takes. But mm-hmm. anyway, in conclusion, while when talking about the midterms, the system is not democratic. Both parties serve capital. I'm not saying don't vote, because I'm gonna get flack for that. Because, you know, voting can sometimes help mitigate the worst forms of harm, Mm. but do not for a second think that you can vote your way out of the march towards fascism. And for your own sanity, 
please don't watch the midterms coverage. It'll drive you mm-hmm. insane. It's just a bunch of political theater. It's the same every single time. They get the maps out and all that stuff. It's mm. uh, it's horse race nonsense, and uh, it is not good for your mental health. Instead, we should cover the midterms. Oh, my God. Yes. But in the exact <laughs> same way we just did. We f- What is forbidden? We cannot talk about their policies. We can only <laughs> talk about what they look like and different shit that they did in life. I and like it. Roast there we them. go. Genuinely, they watched genre a chub- idea. Chub- <laughs> I literally we invented a new genre: political coverage mm. that doesn't touch on policy. I, wait, that's like all political covering. You never mind. <laughs> I, I would nah, watch no it. Joke. I mean, we've got Sleeve McDykel versus Dirts McGee. That one of them was a paint salesman, <laughs> and the other uh, fixed garage doors. Who's it gonna be this week? <laughs> I am not even kidding. New, new the program genre just dropped. I think, oh, especially with the it, it, actual elections, that's that is going to be gold. I'm just reflecting on the image of him looking at Joe Biden. He looks like he's on Chubb Unlimited. <laughs> 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 All right, that's a stupid fucking joke, but that's something to end it off on. Yes. Uh, let us know if you guys like our stupid suggestions. Let us know if you like this format because we'd love to continue doing it. Uh, of course, it's like episode twenty, to... he's like, oh, let us know if you should continue. Doing no, it. but the thing, the, uh, yeah, but we still want the fucking feedback, of right? Course, yeah, of yeah. course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker it, knows how, how to get all those this? comments and those likes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Let us know if you uh, like the ratio of news content to memes in this one because it was yeah. much heavier on memes than usual. If you like it, <laughs> let us know. If you don't like it, on, shut yeah. up. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, do, do let us There's know. There's only we, one opinion allowed. But that being said, of course, big thanks to our Patreon uh, people. We love all of you. We love uh, the people on the Discord. We always have a great time. So do mm. check that out. Check the subreddit out. It's r slash DD program, I think. Which, mm. by the way, every time I go on, it's like 120 people are online, which is it's, fucking it's, insane to think it's about. It's bumping. They're yeah. like 7,200 yeah. subscribers or something like that. Or, yeah, or, that's well, fucking... That, yeah. that is... Yeah, that is growing way... Be- like, that's not even something we're trying to grow, but fuck, whatever. We love the memes. You guys keep doing it. Um, keep bothering uh, JT with uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the the second thought <laughs> fucking memes. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> thoughts on... No. <laughs> thoughts on JT's third thoughts. Oh, um, that God. being said, this is <laughs> this has been the D program. I'm Hakeem. I'm JT. And I'm Yugopnik, and I don't even have first thoughts. Oh, shut up. I'm going to kill you <laughs> everybody, both. <laughs> everybody work for Chubb. Chubb. <laughs> Chubb. Big man from Chubb. <laughs>